In this practical activity, we're going to be measuring the wave-like properties of light. Now to do that, we're going to be using a double slit. Uh, often they come like this, and it's actually on a slide. And we can put this slide into a slide carrier, if you've got one of those available, and that just holds it securely. Now the type of light we're going to be using is coherent, which means it has the same wavelength. And to do that, we're going to be using a laser. Now I must warn you that lasers, although a lot of the times they seem quite safe, they can cause damage to your eye. Now the laser that we're going to be using for this experiment uh, is a, an actual kind of proper piece of scientific equipment. That means we know it's less than one milliwatt. This one has a small cover over the end and you take that off uh, when we're going to use laser. And it also has a key on the back that when we turn it on, we can keep it turned on like so. So this laser here, if you've got one of those at school, that's ideal. A lot of the time though, uh, you might just have something which looks a bit more like one of these laser pointers. Um, and a top tip is if you've got one of these, um, sometimes it's difficult because the button doesn't stay pressed in. But if you set up your uh, clamp like this, as soon as you tighten it a bit, we uh, tighten the jaws over the button and then that laser is turned on. Now when it comes to using a laser, you need to be very careful that it's not pointing at any shiny surfaces. If you have a laser that bounces off a shiny surface, we have a specular reflection, and that could then bounce off that and come back into your eye. Instead, you want to try and point it at something like paper, and that means we have instead a diffuse reflection. Now, of course, uh, these lasers, uh, these ones happen to be red light, um, and that means if you did see it in your eye, then your blink reflex should mean that you'd avoid any serious injury. And often if you do see that laser light in your eye, you kind of look away really quickly. But I'm going to be using some red laser light for this experiment. In order to calculate the wavelength, we need to measure three other distances. We need to know the distance between the slits. Now you can measure that using a traveling microscope if your school has one. Otherwise it's often actually printed on the slide. We also need to know the distance between the slit and the screen where we see the interference pattern, and we can measure that just using a meter ruler. And finally, we need to look at the fringe spacing. Now, to mark this, I'm going to be using a piece of squared paper. And rather than just looking at the distance from one fringe to the one next to it, we're going to look at the distance for 10 complete fringes. So let's have a look at the setup. So I have my laser here, it's pointing at a piece of paper that I just blue tacked onto the wall. I'm actually going to use a set square to make sure that this is parallel to the side of the desk, like so. And then what I'm gonna do is carefully turn that laser on. Again, avoiding looking into the bright light source. What I can then do is set up my double slit just in front of the laser, again, using the set square to make sure that everything is lined up and when I've done that I can now see on the piece of paper over here a very faint but distinct interference pattern. Now I would ideally be doing this with the lights off and you can see that when the lights are off that's much clearer but it's still quite faint and it's sometimes a little bit difficult to measure the distance from one fringe to the other to see where they begin and where they finish. So I've now marked on the piece of paper the distance for 10 fringes. We can take it off the wall to measure that much more precisely, and we can then start to analyze some data. So now we know how to calculate the fringe spacing. With this practical, there are many ways that you can carry it out. For example, you could look at the fringe spacing at different distances between the slit and the board where we're actually looking at that interference pattern. You might investigate different colors of laser to look at different wavelengths or even you could look at different slit spacings to see how that affects the interference pattern. Again, this really depends on what you might be doing in your school. But that was just a brief overview of the young double slit experiment with laser light. And if you're watching on YouTube and you'd like to find a little bit more about the theory behind the physics for this experiment, a set of instructions, some sample data and other videos, then do head over to alevelphysicsonline.com.